Good afternoon, dear doctors. My name is Dr. Larissa Miller. I will discuss with you today lip filler injections techniques and different tricks. I have no conflict of interest and I hope to keep it all my life um, this way. Um, just act in the best interest of other doctors, community and patients. I'm director of Vista Clinic Australia, one of the doctors here uh, for clinical work as well as clinical research where I'm sitting at the moment. And we also do hands-on one-to-one trainings for practical um, aspects of the training. So there are a lot of types of um, filler. We only will be talking about hyaluronic acid filler. Please be very careful and I would advise you to actually, if possible, stay away from people who had any other permanent or semi-permanent types of filler. They tend to be unpredictable, uh, lumpiness and scar formation. Um, if we put hyaluronic acid on the top, I have luxury of having dermatological um, 18 and uh, 16 megahertz ultrasound in my clinic, so I can actually under ultrasound have a look where is the previous filler and still each time consent, and it's quite scary. Um, so, quite commonly I've been asked, Larissa, which filler do you normally use? I really don't have any preference and I would advise you to use something which you trained, which you feel comfortable with and used them before, so you know how this filler behave, how to actually feel like the pressure of the plunge. Um, grossly speaking, two different types. Normal filler, which I can arrange usually in the middle, and we use it for more natural lips request. Or you touch very, very soft. Of course, you'll use softer. Um, if patient had already previous filler, like my lips are been around, and maybe have, have some scar, or I have a few patients who are elite athletes and they just chew feel like a chocolate very quickly. Um, you use a bit of volume type, firm feel for them. If you'll ask me, Larissa, which you use in your practice, I use both in majority of the lips. How I can see it, lips is the bridge. And we first um, have uh, approximately 30% of materials to build the carcass of these lips, which give you quite nice um, lifting effect and definition. And then for more uh, natural softer filler um, everywhere else, which give us uh, better integration and hydration effect. That's why it's no right or wrong answer. It's really experience. Um, if you can uh, come to hands-on training, you're welcome. But uh, at the end of the day, you're a doctor. You actually feel how uh, these lips will handle which material. Firmer lips, firmer filler, softer lips, softer filler. Due to lack of time, I wouldn't discuss much about the anesthetics, but lidocaine is the most common cause of uh, mortality, death, in cosmetic injectables. We have wealthy patients, they commonly on cocaine, they just don't tell you. Uh, and it can interact, it's the same group, with lidocaine. In my, your mind, you give them like small dose, but with their previous cocaine, it's actually give them cardiotoxicity much quicker than you thought. Just um, two days ago, it was in Russia, a big court case when injector used only two meals of lidocaine and patient had cardiac arrest and died. Um, I use as a nun, as, a, as less as possible. Um, Swiss cheese cereal, less you use, less chance you will get one day cardiac arrest and you really need one case in your life. Um, very simple, it's not mandatory procedure. If you can't clear the pain, it's painful, there is no cheating around. Um, they, I use different tricks. Like one of the best tricks actually which work, it, it keep talking. Uh, like philosophers say, if you know wh why you do this, you will most likely be motivated and do it. When I inject, I say this will lift uh, your central lip, this will lift your corner, this will give like a glass effect in your lip, uh, 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 allow lip. 
when you discuss it with them, they're more or less likely to tolerate. I've actually been fascinated, including myself, what girls can do for beauty. It's a lot. Um, so as soon as you explain to them how beautiful she will be, she's actually quite motivated. Uh, quite commonly, I see used BLT cream I, or any other topical. I have it. I almost never use it. Maybe once a year. In fact, I don't even have it in my room. It's here in the reception area. Um, and it's just forever in here. So still fine. But it's maybe once a year for lip filler. The reason why, or how I explain to patients, you um, almost always have swelling uh, of your lips after BLT cream, stroke anesthetic. And when it's swollen, it can wash off the sharpness, which we try to build with injectables. So it wouldn't be sharp. And that's when they say, okay, I can handle. You also can, disc you also can discuss with them that uh, you have very small needles and you have small amount of anesthetic inside. That's why it's only just a few painful. It's amazing what girls can tolerate for beauty. Um, Anesthetic we can skip. Um, I'm sure you know all the uh, basic ones. So when you start, you always have before and after photos. And when you make a photo, show them, look, we have a symmetry. As soon as you're human, you have a symmetry. And that's normal. As much as I can, it will correct with the filler, but you can't really, you, to a certain extent only. And also sometimes I even avert it out and show the little lumps, like a white kind of glance and show that, look, it's normal, you have it. Uh, sometimes it can become slightly bigger with filler, that's normal, don't worry, it's safe. A um, couple of tips how to look better after photo. I, um, you know, like in the Russian kind of um, uh, Instagram photo, they have this very shiny look, it's usually silicon-based, non water-based lubricant actually for intimate use but it gives amazing before and after in the photographs especially if you have camera close like on the like lower face and you have very light bright led light looks amazing i personally have my own technique because it was some research in russia done that when they use antibacterial cream straight after they have much less granulomas and lumpiness formation as well as um delayed angioedema that's why i routinely use bactroban straight away and ask them not to touch for two hours bactroban also look good on before and after give like a, a bit of lipstick effect little tip for you Moving on, I'm um, sure you know anatomy. Uh, the next step after before and after to decide the patient what they believe is beauty. If at this stage they will tell you, doctor, I want something which you feel like not really reasonable request, just don't do it. Body dysmorphic disorder is much more common and you will never meet their requirements really because you can't see what they see. Um, you can actually go one by one structure. Would you like definition, like vermilion body? Or would you like a little bit volume or corners of the mouth, nine out of 10 will tell you the same. I won't lift the upper lip like this. Let's give it to them, that's called Russian lips technique. Uh, Russian lips technique is really um, playing with anatomy. We enhance an orbicularis oris muscle, as you know, at the end, it's kind of almost parallel to your um, lip and when we inject superficially from skin uh, all the way parallel, we're pretty much enhancing the orbicular resources. That's why clinically it looks like lift. Very easy. Russian lips is very superficial technique. Uh, from the first we'll be going from cupid bows, like the highest point, all the way down slowly. Uh, sometimes we do subcision if we if feel we have too much wrinkles. And then press and retrograde, you have a filler. The tip is to use very smooth, like smoother equal distribution of fill you have, more better Russian lips you will get. If you initially have a little bit of tiny um, lumps, that's fine, just massage them off, it's not a big deal. They usually integrate quite nicely. Um, before and after, so, um, so tips the same, uh, pressure and small subsidy. 
Uh, I use 30 gauge needle. You can't do Russian lips with 27. It's just not possible to have this definition of the uh, the, of the cupid bows. Uh, when you injected filler and you like about to take out the needle, you inject a tiny, tiny bodies, and you can actually see how the filler run, 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 run in the vermilion border. Don't inject vermilion border itself; it's not needed. It will just run through. Um, it will be enough for fix the lines sort of definition. Um, the same inventor of Russian lips actually invented devil lips, so octopus lips, which like were really like a scandalous. But actually, this is a protocol for Russian lips, like a minimum. You do definition in the cupid pose in the highest point. The next you do in a half of vermilion border each side, kind of from here, like like pull it out, and the lower lip from two sides, one. Another. Sometimes I do in the middle, like this is my lips, like I'm a little bit in the middle, but most of the cases it's not really needed. If you do this, you'll have a good lift. You're welcome. Um, second most common uh, concern is uh, aging droopiness of the corners of the mouth. Two techniques or combination most common. Um, X linked and you go from one point on the upper lip, on the lower lip, and you can see straight away it's much more um, lifted in general and uh, more old fashioned CC line, which is very uh, budget, tiny, tiny amount of filler needed. So you just inject from the low part and then like a C, C um, fashion go the needle and then retrograde just a tiny, tiny amount. You'll see straight away small lift of the corner of the mouse. Um, this is typical patient who comes just for corners of the mouth, but when we discussed she, as almost all of them would like uh, lip filler to lift the upper, then the corners, we did this as well. Clearly you can see I did the lower lip tiny amount really, she was fine. And one more tip, when you do lips, always inject this lifting point in the nasal level. It will give you lift of the upper lip, and it also will soften the nasolabial folds. The combination of nice lips and deep nasolabial folds look vulgar. They don't like it. And you're a professional, you're in a position to advise. Lower lip, all the same techniques. Um, majority like for you to have a little bit of protocol. Um, so you do vermilion border. You can actually do from one, but I found that a lot of them have small like wrinkles or small scars which interrupt the filler. That's why I do one from here in the Mullen Buddha, then one needle from here, and then from this kind of Russian lips, two points, you go a little bit here, a little bit here, creating like a triangle. And this gives you more glass effect, similar to this when it's in the middle, like a makeup effect, more light, more flat. Um, if it's not enough flat and they have too many wrinkles, you can do so-called helicopter lips. So you inject 27 gauge, they usually give it for free, like in every pack of the film. Inject 27 gauge and rotate. It will give you a subsision effect on flattened. If you do this a few times, each time they do your uh, lip filler, they usually um, have more and more smooth lower lip in the central part. Um, swelling after lip fill is normal because the way we inject it's more needle pricks and that's why it will be swelling. As soon as you warn them in advance, they're usually okay with that. Um, very lips, it's for natural lip lovers. It's um, pretty much a lot of uh, needles and each of them have a tiny amount. Just make you more natural, rejuvenated look. Like this girl who, I would love to do Russian lips for her, but this is her body, so I just done a little bit of um, Paris lips. Again, um, you have to warn a specifically natural lip lovers that it will be initially swelling. That's completely normal. If you like it, we can always inject more. If you don't like it, uh, that's going to be gone in one or two days, but up to two weeks, it's completely settling down. So. As soon as you know, they're fine. 
Um, usually I ask to do when you inject needle bevel up, it will for a few reasons. First of all, you need less filler to have a good results because it goes in more superficial, more uh, visible layer. And second, all the danger structures, they like deep, so you can avoid them. Safety and efficiency, that's good. Just put needle bevel up. Um, sickle lips, we don't have much time to discuss. Basically, just stay away from them unless you know exactly what you're doing. It's the most difficult for injectors um, when they have this emptiness in the middle. Um, grossly speaking, easy. First, you start from inside of the mouth, uh, filling in through the small lines this deficiency. Once it, you kind of shift it from seagull lips to normal lips when it's more line you do whatever technique you want like normal lips like russian paris classic whatever you prefer just start with this one and um that's seagull technique uh, which i done for my patients another tip for seagull lips that because you do more manipulations on the upper lip it gives them more swelling initially when you inject it looks like upper lip is bigger or the same you can just check that middle brick swelling reaction. It will settle in two weeks. They go into normal um, proportion. Another example of seagull lips. Aged girls. Uh, very, very hard to convince them because they're usually quite horrified. Um, they say better be old than um, weird. So and they also, by the time, Mm, have a lot of scar tissue, fibrotic tissue, and filler does not distribute as good. I highly advise to do uh, micro droplet technique when you do everywhere a little bit. In this case, it's just slightly diffusion of the filler, but it doesn't actually give you lumpiness, so problems later. And I like to use it with some kind of uh, polishing, like corals or laser techniques, a uh, very good combination. Uh, they like natural and we have to provide natural, never inject more than 0 0.5 in one go. You want to keep their trust and um, swelling might horrify them. And also when they have this swelling, they have like a few years of your face. It's a central part, give it a beautiful look, they usually come back to you. Um, Botox is highly overrated for lip flip. It's only working for people who have actually overactive muscle. Easy check, ask them to do ooh, if bends, just do tiny amount in the bends, extremely superficial, white. White is never good for lips when you inject, but this is the only when it's good, when it's a white papule and it's intradermal. Otherwise, they might have problems with speaking and smiling. Uh, if we already um, exhausted all other modalities um, for lips like filler and uh, Botox, we can actually do a bit of mesostrates, just a parallel to the vermilion border and a little bit cross hinged from above, um, give it a bit of lift, but it's highly operated, it's actually not as efficient. Uh, I usually do this as an add-on after other modalities. Contraindications, you know, the most common mistakes are uh, when they inject too much in the later part. Raise to subcision, not filler. It will give you more wrinkles like this, and it will give you a uh, not natural look. Another most common mistake, upper lip, central, very central part, under cupid bow. More you inject, more likely you'll have duck. Just don't inject at all, and you will be actually safer. And the third, when we have a nice lips, we must ensure good these level folds for nice, more natural look. Um, always be on the safe side. Lumps, you probably know, we high lace if it's happened. Herpes, in most common cases, actually vascular occlusion, but if they're prone, just give them wild tricks before, not after, it doesn't uh, work as well. Um, swelling, we just discussed with them. If they have a uh, prolonged swelling more than six weeks, we sometimes inject a tiny amount of kinalog, but it's rare and I hope you'll never see it. It's not easy to manage. Just as soon as they have like, more swelling than usually, the first thing, of course, you know, antihistamine drug and they will be already better. Uh, granuloma is rare. High less is, you know, when we do not emergency protocol, we use a little bit more concentration to make sure it doesn't diffuse as much. 
And if you need any training, please uh, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to help. Uh, thank you for your attention. Feel free to contact me if you need uh, any help. And um, thank you very much for your attention. Bye.